Tonight's top story, Typhoon Hinnomnor makes landfall near Busan, South Korea. And now the latest, around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for September 6th. We're still in code red as Hinnom North starts to brush away from the Korean peninsula after making a strong Category 1 landfall there earlier this morning local time. It made landfall at 5.50am and it is still delivering extraordinary amounts of rain over the peninsula. In the Atlantic, Danielle is a hurricane again and Earl is starting to get up towards that strength as well. Uh, so it looks like we're going to get two hurricanes out of this. Earl is forecasted to actually become a major further on down the line as it may pass close to Bermuda. In the eastern Pacific we have the remnants of Javier moving out to sea and an enormous Hurricane K now active uh, and strengthening further as it moves towards the northwest expected to become a high-end Category 2. In the Western Pacific, Hinamnor is about to die off over the Sea of Japan and will turn post-tropical as it heads up towards the east coast of Russia. Two areas of interest behind it, a 50% chance that could develop somewhere in the same region as Hinamnor and a 30% chance that could develop a little bit further east. And in the Indian Ocean, north and south, there are no areas of interest right now. So, nothing much to talk about here once again. North Indian Ocean so far has seen five tropical storms this year. Well then let's take a look at the current satellite imagery and you'll quite clearly see Earl and Danielle both looking decent in their own way. Danielle with the eye much more clearer once again. Earl struggling against wind shear but it will get better for it soon. Dry air around it as well so it's got all the elements up against it right now. In the eastern Pacific, look how enormous K is, a very large hurricane, almost as big as Mexico itself, um, and certainly gaining uh, momentum and strength, uh, and it looks like there could be a significant landfall further down the line possibly, or a close pass to the Baja California Peninsula. Let's take a look at some other views. Uh, here is the visible as we were taking a look at the late images as the sun begins to set over the hurricane uh, its eye feature you know it's it could be better it appears to be a little bit open towards the southwestern side there may be a little bit of dry air intertwined in with it as well but the banding looks decent uh, and this storm is certainly on its way uh, infrared not looking too bad uh, it could do a little bit better with the amount of uh, cold cloud tops but still a fair amount of minus 70s look further towards the east over to where it's dark now and there's Earl still blowing up a lot of convection over its massive convective tops which are displaced just a little bit west of its center and then look towards Danielle which now may have a concentric eye pattern or something to that effect uh, and is looking rather interesting uh, pretty in its own way there right up in the northern part of the Atlantic and down there you have some little area of disturbance hasn't been marked by our team at the moment the National Hurricane Center have a moderate chance on this area of interest that will be sauntering out over the main development region so lots to look at in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific right now in the Western Pacific of course there's Hinnomnor moving off towards the top of the screen and you can see two other little disturbances in its wake just to the southeast there and that's what we've marked as two areas of interest that we're going to be watching closely. That first one uh, looking rather aggressive moving to the west southwest could be on its way to becoming something already looking at that imagery but at the moment a 50% chance. Indian Ocean looking fairly quiet, mainly monsoonal activity uh, and quite far south at that. Bangladesh getting quite a few showers today into the uh, Himalayan foothills and in the southern hemisphere around Australia things are looking fairly quiet compared to recent days and a big frontal system blowing through there, uh, New Caledonia and on towards Fiji. 
So let's now have a look at sea surface temperatures. Now K is over just a little bit of cooler waters there, caused by probably a previous upwelling. But temperatures are going to stay around 27 to 28 degrees and that's going to be decent to get the storm up another category at least. In the Atlantic, uh, Earl is entering very warm waters, getting even warmer as it moves northwards. And Danielle is still harking about in uh, lower sea surface temperatures. They're still okay, around about 26 degrees, uh, but barely enough to sustain itself. North Indian Ocean, very warm if any storms find themselves in there anytime soon, over 30 degrees, maybe pushing 32 even, uh, near the Odisha coast. In the Western Pacific, we're taking a look there at those warm temperatures still, even after Hinnom Noor, temperatures are still looking fairly good, uh, of course they're a little bit cooler. Hinnom Noor itself is over much cooler sea surface temperatures, now down to about 23 degrees Celsius, and it's well on its way to becoming post-tropical as a result. So I imagine on the anomalies it'll have cooled down a little bit where Hinnomnor was, yes, you can see the blues there, but all around it there's still some oranges of above average temperatures for those other storms to potentially uh, have some uh, joy with. In the eastern Pacific it's around average for K, and in the Atlantic it's generally above average to well above average for Earl and Danielle, but it, uh, Danielle's upwelling already starting to show on that anomaly chart. All the oceanic heat energy though is towards the Bahamas, the Western Caribbean and uh, slipping through to the east now and parts of the Gulf of Mexico. In the Western Pacific we're still looking at very high amounts in the Philippine Sea, usual areas, uh, but we've not really had a storm tap into the lower tropics so far to be honest this year. Let's check those computer models, so looking forward now to the Atlantic. There could be three simultaneous storms if the GFS has its way with that third system and then there's Earl strengthening becoming a very strong storm maybe high end category 3 there as it rounds another uh, low and then swirls around and tries to make a break for Newfoundland but it doesn't make it ultimately. Danielle moving off up there and just generally becoming cooler and turning post tropical and then absorbing another system becoming a very broad extra tropical low. The Eastern Pacific here's K and its movement over the next few days. GFS a little bit slow with the uptake there on the model, uh, but there it goes again uh, on the initialization, I should say. Landfall there as a category one hurricane in the Baja California Peninsula with tropical storm force winds extending further north and there's still a chance that those gale force winds could reach north of the border with California. Uh, and that would be a very rare occurrence of tropical storm force conditions in California and then it continues off towards the west. There's Hinnom Noor and what's left of it moving through the coast of Russia. GFS still not really keen on these two systems forming yet, although one eventually does start to ignite, and another one forms much further towards the east there, to almost towards the central Pacific. And you can see at the end of the five day period there, that first system already becomes a typhoon and a rather small system, and you were thinking, here we go again, is it another Hinnom Noor? Well, we'll have to wait and see that second system brewing as well. North Indian Ocean, uh, not too far from now, a storm starts to brew in the Bay of Bengal. It's got model support for a weak disturbance. Uh, GFS goes much further with a mid-range tropical storm and continuing on the western side of India as well. So more concerns for those areas affected by flooding in the Pakistan region. Uh, but there is a potential landfall on the 9th, that's three days from now only, for a potential tropical storm landfall, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. Rainfall estimates from K, and we're looking at these colours start to engulf the uh, nation of Mexico, and you can see there from K a lot of orange, that denotes around 6 inches of rain, and some reds there as well, which is over 10 inches of rain, that's 250 millimetres. Let's take a look at some of those areas. There's an isolated spot of 18 inches there. That's not from K, uh, but looking at some other areas, we're getting 7 to 10 inches from K's impacts along the Baja California Peninsula and the Gulf of California coasts of both sides. So certainly some rain potential. Let's check the longer range. What's to become of Earl? Well, it starts to get wrapped around another low pressure system, probably turns post tropical there and eventually absorbs it and becomes a large system moving eastwards. 
down in the main development region right near the end of day 10 there there's another system that tries its luck and maybe becomes a very brief tropical cyclone much like the one that we might be looking at near Cape Verde in the next five days. Elsewhere nothing else in the Atlantic for that five to ten day period. Eastern Pacific, what happens to K? Well, it starts to die off there. It does a little bit of a loop as a remnant low and it's sticking around. Another system starts to form now uh, near the uh, small islands there off Mexico that has a long name that I've forgotten again and becomes a tropical storm just off the southern coast of the Baja California Peninsula. So a weak TS there by the end of day 10. Uh, that, of course, is longer range and we don't really have any suggestions of what it might do yet. And so the Western Pacific, these two systems and the GFS having a field day with these, making both of them major typhoons. Uh, the Western one peaking first and then moving through Okinawa and then towards the South China Sea, sounds familiar. And then a big typhoon later on, uh, not far from the Northern Mariana Islands, although it will miss a very large, well, potentially quite a large, but certainly a strong major typhoon by the end of day 10. This is the GFS, things can change on a dime with that forecast. That's the important stuff done with, you can scan this barcode and take a look at the Force 13 store. We have animations that you can request, individual and full season animations bespoke, along with our merch products. And the still waiting for Hone t-shirt, of course. Well then, into the silly range, let's take a look at what happens to that storm off Mexico. Uh, well, it just shoots off westwards, might become a hurricane, then another one forms much behind it and becomes potentially a significant hurricane off the coast of Mexico. To be honest though, nothing really too crazy. There's really nothing much that it predicts in the Atlantic at all right now as well, so that must only be good news. Uh, unless you're an Atlantic fan, uh, in which case it will be falling even further behind the average, even with Earl and Danielle's input. But there's the Eastern Pacific trying to bump its numbers up, certainly. Westpac, these two typhoons, South China's East China Sea, sorry, uh, off, along the coast of China, starts to weaken and then it goes towards Korea and Japan, the same areas affected by Hinnom Nor, good lord, and then this huge typhoon behind it, huge and strong and slow as it starts to push northwards and eventually will probably get swept up northeastwards. But that is right at the end of the forecast period, that's day 10 to 16, and this uh, situation could change markedly. There are two systems that haven't even formed yet so the margin for error or the probability of error is very high on this day September the 6th 1992 we had two major cyclones active on this day Hurricane Orlean which we rated as a category 5 at peak and Typhoon Ryan which was a category 4 as it was moving almost due north poleward towards the Japanese islands 18E had almost uh, had also formed on this day further west of Orlean and that was about to become Hurricane in Niki which would then strike the Hawaiian Islands about a week or two later. What a season 1992 was in the Eastern Pacific. They were up to 18E by that point. This year it's quite an active Eastern Pacific as well. The next name there is Leicester. In the Atlantic it's Fiona and in the Central Pacific it's Hone. I want to also point out that in the Gulf of Mexico it's been almost a year since we last had a storm in that area and that's the longest such gap since 1976-77. I find that extraordinary. The next name in the Western Pacific is Muifa and in the North Indian Ocean it's Sitrang. And in the Southern Hemisphere we start the season in the Southwest Indian Ocean with Ashley. Darien's next up in Australia and Harley will be waiting for in the South Pacific. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night with the latest.